Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, and I'm out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. The telescope, the Eon 130, is over there by the big umbrella, and it's under cover right now, just protecting it from the sunshine. Finally, getting some clear nights across my region, and uh, several of those clear nights I've been experimenting with filters, uh, particularly the uh, dual band filters for one-shot color cameras. Now I started doing a test to see which one uh, is better or how each different one compares to each other, uh, which ones are good for galaxies, which ones are good for nebulosity, and so forth and so on. Now the filters that I uh, have been testing are the Optolong uh, brand of filters, and I use the Optolong uh, L Pro, which is really good for galaxies, but I wanted to see what it looked like on a nebula. Uh, I also use the Optolong L Enhance, one of my favorite filters, and also the Optolong L Ultimate filter, which is a very strict narrow band filter. And also I did one night with no filter whatsoever. Now the target that I used was a very popular Crescent Nebula, NGC 6888. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at that right now. I had a lot of people asking me, you know, could I show them my workflow as well? So I'll go through one of the workflows uh, from start to finish, uh, kind of quickly though, uh, and then start showing the comparison between the three filters and the night with no filters. Each image uh, session lasted about four to five hours on each night that I was able to get out. I started the process in all around June 10th was my first night. And I finished up last night, that was June 27th, actually this morning, June 28th. So with that being said, let's go upstairs and take a look. All right, I'm inside right now and the night has just fallen. So uh, the sky is clear. So what happens with a clear sky? The moon, let's take a look at the moon. Uh, it has moved into the field of view right now. So the moon is brightening up the skies. But that's one of the advantages of these filters. They help uh, eliminate a lot of the light pollution from the moon, uh, particularly the L Pro. Uh, it's designed for uh, you know, general light pollution and uh, lunar interference as well. Uh, the other filters, they do a good job at that. One of the examples I do want to show you is this. Let's go into Pixon site. Now I took my, um, this is the, uh, the uh, Optolong L Ultimate filter view that I used the other night. Uh, this was on the night of the uh, 26th, the morning of the 27th of June. And I got about a four and a half hour image uh, out of this. So let's open up that file after stacking in Auto Stackard and using uh, darks, uh, flats, and dark flats uh, for calibration frames. And let's open up that image. And there are the, uh, the, the fit files. And there's the auto save right there. Now, when you first open it up, uh, you're not going to see much at all. I mean, it doesn't show much because it is dark. It filtered out a lot of the light, but there's a lot of nebulosity to be found in this image. So the first thing I want to do is stretch it. Now, if you look closely, you can see some of the brighter stars uh, showing up, but let's do an auto stretch right now. And doing that, you'll be surprised. Look at what happens. There's the Crescent Nebula right there in the auto stretch. And next thing I like to do is go into uh, automatic background extractor and just take the defaults and just uh, dump it on the image right there and let it do its thing. It's not too much uh, errors in this one, so it's, it shouldn't be much of a difference. A little bit right there. All right, now the next thing I do is I go into my background uh, neutralization uh, program right here. So before I do that, I'm gonna look in the image and right about in here, whoops, wrong way, uh, I see some dark areas. I wanna use, uh, right there, that's gonna be good. So I'm gonna click on this region up here uh, for a new preview uh, mode. And just click on that and bring it down over here. And then this, uh, using the mouse, select an area that is mostly dark. And that's going to be preview number one. Now for the rest of the image, for the color calibration, I'm going to use the whole image. All right, so next thing I do here is select my background and it's going to be preview one. 
and uh, I, would, I would select that if it's not already there. And if you hold the mouse cursor over uh, the uh, tab there, you can see the image that it's using as its preview. Say OK, and then say uh, Execute, and go ahead. And it will turn a little bit more red, look at that. There's a lot of hydrogen alpha, hydrogen gas floating around in this nebula area here. All right, next thing I wanna do is color calibration. And uh, that's over here. And again, I'm gonna use the whole frame. So with that, I'm gonna select auto save. And since this is the auto save right there, and I'm selecting the whole image. Okay. And then for the uh, background reference, I'm gonna use preview number one which has already been selected and OK, and then execute that and see what happens with the colors here. It takes a few seconds, not long. And there we have it right there. Not too much of a change. Looks pretty good. A lot of times it will clear up the color uh, if there's color issues uh, involved. But uh, next thing I'm going to do is just take this preview and just delete it. I don't need it anymore. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just go into some curves and transformation just to play around just a little bit with it. And uh, I'm going to open up a preview and let's take it down just a little bit. Whoops, down. Uh, right there. Right there, that looks good. All right. Uh, this is for demonstrations only, so it doesn't matter. But it looks pretty good. Uh, we don't need that. We can close that. Now, if I were to save it like this, I would get that black image. Uh, none of this would show up. So the next thing I want to do is go through a screen transfer uh, into a histogram transformation. And the way I do it is just take the screen transfer value from up here, click on this little triangle and drop it down into the bottom tray of the histogram transformation. And that'll automatically hist uh, transfer the histogram and then you have to execute it just by hitting the square. And it should turn white and it did. And then I go over here and this is the uh, device that will turn on and turn off the histogram transformation uh, or the screen transfer. And there you go. Now, now if I were to save this image, it would look exactly like that. So let's do that just for um, fun. And let's say save as. And I'm going to save it as, um, or I already did it one time before. Uh, I'm just going to call it Ultimate PI for Pixinsight and just save it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'll, I'll overwrite it. Yes. And I want to save this as a 16 bit image. So go to that and say OK. And done. As soon as it's writing, come on, write. OK. Now, the next thing I like to do. Uh, some people say you do this before, do it after. I think it doesn't matter in this particular example, so I'm going to do it uh, after the screen transfer function. And uh, I'm going to go into Blur Exterminator. And I basically take, have taken the defaults, uh, but I, I, I let the Adjust Star uh, Halos, I put that at minus 0.16. Just, that's, I found that to be pretty good. Anyway, uh, again, just you can either hit the square or get the triangle and drop it into the image. Let it do its thing. Now, I have a graphics accelerator card on my computer, and it, it goes pretty fast, as you can see right here, uh, doing the um, Blur Exterminator. And it's just about done already. This is real time. I'm not pausing or anything. There it goes. And there. Now you can see the difference. Uh, let's go before. Yeah. And then after. It cleans out a lot of those stars and, and smooths things out. A lot of nebulosity showing up with this uh, this image here, uh, this filter. Okay, uh, now I, I, I like to save that, and I'll save it as, save as, and I'm going to call that um, Ultimate Blur Exterminator, XT. B-L-U-R-X-T dot TIFF, and... And again, 16-bit, save it, okay. Writing the file. Okay, now the next thing I like to do is star exterminator. And I'll take it over here. And again, before or after, I like doing it after I do the uh, stretching. And I just take the defaults and let it rip. Once again, having this connected with my graphics card, it uh, will speed things up considerably. 
after it goes through the initial initialization and then it will go and do its job. There it's doing it right now. You can see those number clicking around right over here. All right. So we're going to get two images. We're going to get a star image and a nebulosity image. There's the star background right there. I'm going to take that and save it. File. Save as. Okay, ultimate stars. All right. 16-bit again. Everything is consistent at 16-bit. All right, the next thing, there's the, uh, the nebulosity without the stars. And, and there you can see the, the crescent nebula itself. And uh, uh, what's interesting is this blue area here, which you cannot see on the other images, which I'm going to show you in a minute. All right, let's uh, save that. Save as. Again, we're going to call it ultimate. And I'm just going to call it nebulosity or neb for short. So, I have all my files saved, 16-bit, and it's saving, and we're done. So I, I can actually uh, delete these images now. Uh, some people like to um, uh, work even further in PixInsight, and you can, uh, but I am more comfortable working in Photoshop. So. That's why I saved all these images as 16 bits so I can work with them in Photoshop and get the uh, final images from there. So uh, from now I want to for now I want to do the comparison between no filter, the L Pro filter, the L um, enhance, one of my favorites as I mentioned outside, and the this one right here, the the ultimate. Okay, let's do that. All right, looking at the visible light spectrum, this is the light coming in through the, uh, uh, through the telescope, reaching the sensor of the camera. Now, without any filter, all of this light is making it to the sensor on the camera, and that's exactly what I had last night. No filters on whatsoever. So let's take a look at the picture of the Crescent Nebula. Uh, this is like a four-hour image, uh, five-minute exposures. I lowered the gain to uh, 50 instead of 100 because uh, there was just so much light coming in. Uh, because there was no filter on there whatsoever. And uh, this is the uh, the image itself. You can barely see the nebulosity over here. Uh, and that's it. But uh, lots and lots and lots of stars. All right. Let's move along to the uh, L Pro filter. And and this this filter here is designed for basically galaxies. It's, it's And it's really good for galaxy because it, it's filtering out uh, different areas of, of light. It's allowing this light over here, 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 and here uh, to come on in and a little bit over here in the in the blue. But uh, it's filtering out a lot of this other light. Let's take a look uh, at this example here. There's the color spectrum right there. And then the actual light it's filtering out. There it is. Uh, this is allowing this red lights in, some uh, yellow and orange and some green light in. And then more green into the uh, cyan to the blue and the darker blues and then into the ultraviolet uh, almost uh, light violet anyway. Uh, this is the Optolong L Pro filter. Yeah, it, it, it's really good for galaxies. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm shooting a galaxy right now. Let's take a look at that alive view right now. And here it is there. And this is M101. I, I'm using the L Pro filter on, on the camera right now. And there's that supernova right there showing up brightly. Uh, let's zoom in even more on that. Look at that. Uh, it's still about a month ago, a month and a half now, uh, this uh, supernova. This is June 28th uh, right now. And it is still... Um, shining brightly so that that is one supernova if it's you know 29 million light years away uh that, that is one uh big exploding explosion of a star out there but anyway going back to the uh, spectrum over here there you have it uh right there uh, allowing this light to move on or to move through the uh uh filter into the lens of the camera along with the reds and the green and the blue over here so and here's the result from that, and a little bit better, a little bit better picture. It's, it's lighting some of that middle light in, but you're also being able to see now much more of the uh, nebulosity, less of the uh, stars, uh, because there's just you know a little bit less light coming in in, in that spectrum there. Uh, when you compare it, though, to the no filter whatsoever, there is a big difference there. Plus, you're getting, I'm getting washed out, too. I had a half a moon last night. All right. Let's move along 
to the L Enhance filter, which I really like. And this is a filter here, once again, allowing only the uh, area of oxygen 3 and the uh, H-beta, uh, which is a bluer light, uh, and then the hydrogen alpha, which is a redder light, but it does not allow the uh, sulfur 2 or any of the lights in between the H-alpha and the oxygen 3. And another view of that, uh, it's just allowing this light in over here, a little bit of the H-beta, uh, which is darker blue, and uh, and into the hydrogen alpha light right over here. And the results, <laughs> that's a pretty good looking picture right then and there. Uh, the uh, ill enhanced uh, uh, Ophthalon filter is, is, I mean, look at all this nebulosity over here. I didn't see this at all, obviously, in the on the uh, no filter whatsoever. And then even with the L Pro filter, I was just seeing just a little bit of this reddish area up in here. But you know, looking at with the L Enhance, major difference here, uh, you can see. And also, you're beginning to see some of the blue over here, uh, which is part of the shock wave uh, that forms this, this, uh, this nebula. It's like two different shock waves from the passing stars. Uh, one's going in and one's going out. And I believe this, the red lights here is uh, uh, moving in and this bluer area here is moving out. But with the next filter, the uh, ultimate filter, uh, this is going to show up, this blue is going to show up even more. Let's take a look. Let's uh, close this down first of all. And uh, right here. And then let's uh, move the filters to the resting place. Now the ultimate um, is just that. It's, it's a very narrow area in the hydrogen alpha and the hydrogen, I mean in the um, oxygen 3 areas. I think it's only 3 nanometers uh, wavelength in, in, in width there. And again, this is all the light it's allowed passing through. So there's hardly any light coming in, but you're getting that nebulosity light and that blue light. And it's mostly the light that we do see uh, that we're interested in, in the oxygen three and the hydrogen alpha light. So let's take a look at the picture and wow, look at that. I, I mean, you, you, you wouldn't know by looking at this picture, there was so much nebulosity all around and so forth, but here you have it with the ultimate. Well, you got it to some extent with the L enhanced, but with the ultimate, you're getting all this nebulosity over here and all around the, uh, the, it, the actual crescent itself. And then if you look closer at the crescent, you can see that shock wave. You can actually see uh, waves in the shock wave uh, passing out uh, through the uh, uh, area here. And uh, it's, it's just amazing to me, uh, this picture, uh, the difference in filters. Uh, basically, you know, they're all the same camera, the same telescope, and uh, more or less the same nighttime conditions and about the same exposure time. These are all about three to four hours in length uh, of exposure time and all stacked together uh, in, in the same stacking program. So there you have it, the difference right there. And just for fun, <laughs> I uh, took all the... Um, images except uh, not this image here i didn't use this image here but i took the other three the uh, the pro the uh, uh enhance and the uh ultimate and i stacked them all together and this is what i got uh the combination of all that which is interesting you see this kind of blue star up here uh and i'm getting some halos because probably from the um uh uh, H the uh, the uh, L Pro, uh, but uh, still you're getting quite a bit of activity, uh, nice uh, uh, information actually seeing. This almost looks like an explosion, doesn't it? Um, but anyway, yeah, there you have it. Well, I hope you found some value in this video. I'm out here in the heavenly backyard garden and the daylilies, they've been just about past their peak. They've been blooming fairly, fairly well over the last couple of months, but now the dahlias, uh, they're putting in the, a display and these will keep displaying color and beauty for, well, not the next couple of weeks, but the next several months. Uh, in, anyway, in my region. Uh, so these, uh, I'm enjoying the dahlias. Anyway, uh, I'm finally getting some clear nights. so. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting some more of these astronomy videos out. I've been getting a lot of rain and thunderstorms as well. Hence, I've been putting out a lot of weather videos on my other channel, my Pat's Weather and Nature channel, uh, mostly uh, dedicated for weather. A few garden uh, videos there as well. I have a link to there 
uh, to that in my comment section below. Anyway, if you, if you found some value in this, in this video, uh, please hit the like button. That's always very helpful uh, for the YouTube algorithm. And it, what's even more helpful is if you leave a comment. Uh, that computer, that algorithm, uh, artificial intelligence, AI, whatever you want to call it, uh, it seems to like seeing comments being written down. Whether it's a detailed comment about the, the video, the, the lack of my, <laughs> the lack of my uh, techniques or whatever, uh, or even just say, hello, Pat, uh, just add a comment if you can. That'd be nice. Also, if you would like to, uh, well, if you'd like to support my channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, that's always available. There is the uh, link right there, buy me a coffee and I have the links to it uh, in the comments section below. And if you also would like to join my channel to help support uh, this venture out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden with Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. And we got some, well, the summer months coming in now. In the summer months, uh, we just have a plethora of nebulosity to look at. Uh, the, the Milky Way, the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way, and all these different nebulosity, the nebulae uh, that are available up in the sky. It's just like a garden of color up in the sky from the Heavenly Backyard Garden. So with that being said, thanks for watching. And unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.